Hi everybody, my name is Dave Marsh and I'd like to welcome you to this Matrix version 6.5 CMA tutorial. Now before we begin, I'd like to mention that because each MLS has slightly different requirements, the system that we'll be using during this tutorial may differ slightly from the one that you're currently working with. Nevertheless, the functionality is the same and for the most part, whatever you see during this tutorial, you'll easily recognize in your own system. Now I'm going to take for granted that everyone knows how to log into the system, so we're going to start by inserting our user ID and our password, then click login to begin. Now there are a couple of ways to create a CMA in Matrix. The first is to generate some search results, and then select the listings that you'd like to include as comparables in your CMA. Okay, once your comparables have been chosen, click on CMA in your button bar and this will take you to the CMA step-by-step -step wizard. Now we're going to explore this wizard in a moment, but for now, we just need to be aware that by initiating the CMA from your search results, the comparable step of the CMA has already been completed. All right, the second method of creating a CMA is by starting one from scratch. And to do this, I'm going to hover over the My Matrix tab and then select My CMAs from the drop-down menu. And this takes us to the same CMA wizard that we just saw, except this time, nothing has been added, so we'll need to complete each step. Let's begin by clicking on the Start a New CMA button, and from here, select who we're creating the CMA for. We can also add an optional description if we'd like, but for now, let's go to the next step of the wizard, where we're asked to select which pages we'd like to include in our CMA. And if we expand the page categories, we see the default CMA pages that are available to choose from, but we also have the ability to include our own custom pages. So let's go ahead and do that by clicking on the custom pages link, and then browse your computer to where that file is stored. All right, once you found it, simply click the upload button, then select if you'd like to add the default CMA header to your file. All right, click on save, and your custom file is now available to include in all future CMAs. So now let's go through and select which pages we'd like to include in this CMA. And we'll start with including our custom CMA page, as well as a cover page with an agent photo. Now I can either individually select any of the subpages I might like to include, or I can select all the subpages simply by clicking on the page heading. So with my pages selected, I can now change the order of how they will appear in my CMA simply by holding down the control key while clicking on the items, then moving them up or down in the list. Of course, removing the pages is as simple as selecting the items, then clicking on the delete icon. All right, one other option I'd like to point out on this page is the ability to set these pages as your starting default. So if I don't want to continually add these pages every single time I create a brand new CMA, I can simply set this as my starting default by clicking this link here. Or if I prefer to restore back to the system default, I'd simply click on the Restore Defaults link. But for now, let's proceed to the next step of our CMA wizard, which is choosing our subject property. And as you can see, we have a few different options available to do this. The first is by manually filling in whatever fields I'd like to include in my subject property, perhaps because the property has never been listed. Scrolling down, you'll notice that there is also space provided to add custom fields, as well as choose the subject property's map location. The second method of adding a subject property is by auto-filling the form using an existing MLS number. For this example, however, we're going to autofill our form, and we'll do this by searching for all active, residential, single-family homes in this area that are between $650,000 and $750,000 with two plus bedrooms and three plus bathrooms. All right, switching to thumbnail display, Let's choose this listing as our subject property by clicking on the Fill from Selected button. Of course, from here, we can also choose to add or update the photo and the information that's currently displayed. 
All right, assuming you've added a cover page to your CMA, this next step is where you would add the contact information for this subject property. Below this, you'll notice that my agent information is already being pre-populated. And this was initially done in the CMA cover sheet section found under My Matrix, My Information. If this information hasn't yet been set, a quicker way to access that area is by clicking on the Edit My Information link located in the Agent Information section of this page. And of course, if you'd like to override the default information for this specific CMA, simply click on the Override link located in the Agent Information area. All right, now it's time to choose our comparables. And as we saw earlier, we could have already chosen them from a search but I'm creating the CMA from scratch, so I must choose my CMA comparables either from a cart or by doing a search for them. Now, because I haven't been collecting CMA comparables in a cart, I'm going to do a search. And of course, what we would like to do is find listings that are comparable to my subject property. So again, let's do a search for all active, sold, and expired, residential, single-family homes in this area that are between $650,000 and $750,000 with two-plus bedrooms and three-plus bathrooms. All right, so let's go ahead and quickly choose some random, active, sold, and expired listings. And of course, as an agent, you would spend a lot more time choosing which comparables to include. But for now, let's just use these six selected listings, then click the Add Selected button. And here we see our selected comparable listings. Now let's view the map page that we've chosen to include. Nothing to do here is this simply displays where the comparables are located relative to our subject property. Okay, so this next step of the wizard is a completely optional step. And that's the adjustment section. Now because our comparable search centered around listings that were similar to our subject property, we can expect prices to be very close as well. But essentially, what we've done in this adjustment section is given the agent the ability to further refine the prices of their comparable properties. Let's demonstrate this by looking at a couple of these features. And we'll start with bedrooms. Well, we see that our subject property has three bedrooms. And some of our comparables have five, and some have four bedrooms. Now let's assume that the average cost of a bedroom in a higher-end home is $15,000. So we'll go ahead and add $15,000 as our base value. And what happens is that Matrix will automatically subtract $15,000 per bedroom for every comparable with more bedrooms than our subject property. On the other hand, Comparable properties with fewer bedrooms than our subject property will have $15,000 per bedroom added to their value. But let's assume, maybe because we're familiar with this property and its bedrooms, that it doesn't need this much of a reduction in price. So we can override this value, which is now indicated by a highlighted background. All right, now let's do the same for bathrooms. Again, we'll assume the average price of a higher-end bathroom is $20,000. So we'll add that as our base value, and Matrix automatically adjusts the comparable prices according to how many bathrooms they have. And just like bedrooms, comparable properties with more bathrooms than our subject property will be reduced in price by $20,000 for each additional one. Properties with the same number of bathrooms, however, will not be affected. All right, we're going to move on now to the pricing step of the CMA wizard. And again, this is completely optional. But what Matrix does in the summary section is crunch the numbers from comparable prices, as well as any adjusted comparable prices, and displays the low, median, average, and high amounts according to each. Below that is an optional area for agents to include a suggested list price based on the values represented above plus any additional notes that should be included in the CMA. And that's it. Click on Finish, and we see a final summary of all the completed steps. A couple of additional things worth noting. First, there are currently two ways to save a CMA. 
The first is an autosave feature that automatically saves your CMA each time you proceed to a new step of the wizard. The second way is to save the CMA by manually clicking the save icon. To display your CMA in a PDF format, you first need to have the free Adobe Reader installed on your computer. Now click the View CMA button. To send a copy of the CMA to one or more contacts, simply click the Email CMA button, enter the recipient, as well as any other additional information that you'd like to include. And now, as the client, let's open our email account and take a look at the message sent from our agent. And you'll notice that Matrix does not email the entire CMA, but instead sends a link to the CMA which is stored on our server. So let's click the link to view the CMA. And remember, the CMA can also be accessed by the client in the direct emails and reports section of their client portal. All right, well, this concludes the Matrix CMA tutorial. I'd like to thank you for watching and hope that you can join me for another session. Take care.